the screen. Also, we ask you to please mute your microphone throughout the session to avoid any feedback or, or noise that might distract from the presentation today. And finally, we'll be recording the session today. So if you do not wish to appear in the recording, uh, please go ahead and turn off your video. And we invite you to change your name if you'd like to, or delete your name to ensure that you don't appear. Okay. And I think we'll get started in just one minute. Let me confirm with uh, Rosie from Capital Horizons to ensure that we're not waiting on a large group. It's okay. So we thank you for your patience as we get started today. And just one last reminder to please go ahead and keep your microphones muted throughout our presentation as we have folks connecting from all throughout the world today. Okay, thank you. Great, it's so great to see all of you in the chat where everyone's from and the different languages. Thanks again. So my name is Peter Stump and I work with the Solidarity and Development Secretariat uh, with the headquarters in Rome, Italy. And today we wanted to share with the wider Lasallian community um, the first year of our capacity building initiative to help make collaboration common or to deepen collaboration throughout the Institute. And so we really appreciate all of you connecting and joining so that we can help share some of the work we've done and carry on for the next year as well. To get started, I'd like to invite Ms. Jane Manaya Gassisio from Mwangasa College in Kenya, who will lead us in our opening prayer. Jane, thanks for joining us today. We continue to remember that in the holy presence of God, God of hope, day by day, step by step, you walk with us as a people united in diversity, women and men building an increasingly more humane world for everybody. Hear the cry of our hearts and fulfill our hopes to be builders of a better world. Help us to build bridges for the young to whom God has entrusted us. May all who encounter us find welcome, support, and solidarity together in community. Side by side, may you continue to guide us while opening our minds and hearts to parts of our love, to parts of our hope. Leave Jesus in our hearts forever. Forever. Thank you so much, Jen. And now I'd like to invite Rosie Bishop from Capital Horizons, uh, the nonprofit that's been guiding us through this past year, uh, to set the scene for us and provide a little introduction. Rosie, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. And thank you, Jane, for that beautiful prayer to set the scene today. Welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you all very much for joining. I know it's very different times for all of you, but it's fantastic we can all connect together in this way with over 90 of us here. So as Peter said, I'm Rosie from Kepler Horizons and we have been supporting you all with the De La Salle on this journey um, of greater collaboration. So today the objective is to share with you what the program was all about that we've been working on for the last year. And um, some of the key achievements we made, including some of the outputs that have come. Um, so we'll be handing over to Peter Stemp to do more of an overview. And then we'll be hearing presentations from five different people around what, what the outcomes have been and, and how you can get involved in those outcomes. There's a wide variety of different things we've been doing 
all to make collaboration easier and more impactful across the institute. And throughout the, the session today, we will try and make it interactive and get you all uh, thinking and getting involved. And so to start us all off, we would like you to get involved with our first uh, activity. So we'd like you all to think in one word, what does Lasallian collaboration mean to you? In one word, what does Lasallian collaboration mean to you? And we would like you to enter this word into what we call a Mentimeter. So I have put a link in the chat. If you could please click that link and enter a code, which is also in the chat, you can then enter your one word and we can create a word cloud. So the code is 86, 37, 61, 85. 86, 37, 61, 85. And we'll start seeing all the words coming through in a word cloud, which I am now sharing on the screen. So if you all add your one word about what does Lasallian collaboration mean to you? Right, and any language is fine, whichever language you speak. Great. So we've got connected, solidarity, community, association, fantastic, family, that's a nice word, effectiveness, association, united, fantastic. We'll keep these words coming through and then we'll, we'll keep seeing this cloud grow and grow. But it's great that you all have such lovely words to share about the Salian collaboration. Okay, so back to the presentation where uh, Peter will now introduce a bit more about the, the program. Thank you, Peter. Sure, thanks so much, Rosie. Why don't we go ahead and we'll move to the next slide. And when we thought about the work of our last year together, we thought it might be important to share a little bit of the process. And we thought numbers would be a good way to do that. So we wanted to share some numbers with you. If we look at the circle and we think about it like a clock, and we'll start with the number three, and then we'll just move to five, six, and 10. Uh, this kind of describes the process that we've gone through over the last year together. So we start with three, three languages, French, Spanish, and English, the official languages of the Institute. All of our live sessions together, documents and official communications were connected in three languages. Five, our five regions of the Lasallian Institute, all of our participants come from each of these five regions. Five also represents five practical actions that together were identified to help us make collaboration more common throughout the Institute. Six. Six represents six interpreters that provided simultaneous interpretation for all of our live sessions via Zoom, as well as translation for all of our documents and official communications in French, English, and Spanish. 10, 10 represents 10 different facilitators that were used to allow us to meet into small groups, to work more closely together, to begin to practice collaboration and help us ensure that all of the work we're doing represents the larger Lasallian family. 18, 18 represents 18 live Zoom sessions that we've participated in over the last year. 18 also represents the 18 different time zones that participants were connected to during our live Zoom sessions from California in the United States to Sydney in Australia and everywhere else in between for us to be able to come together in real time. 42. 42 represents 42 individual conversations 
and individual surveys that were conducted to help us get a better understanding of collaboration throughout our network. And these were conducted separately from our live Zoom sessions. 54. 54 represents the number of participants that have collaborated throughout this year-long journey. These participants include brother visitors, university presidents, mission directors, young Lasallian leaders, school principals and teachers, nonprofit executives and administrators, and many different Lasallians from different types of ministries throughout the Institute. And 1,620. This represents 1,620 minutes that this group has spent together live in real time collaborating. However, it does not count all of the different times that our separate groups met outside of our sessions to ensure that we were developing the very best possible strategy. All of these different actions, these numbers that I've just shared, all of these have gone into today and led us to the five practical actions that we've developed. So Rosie, why don't we move to the next slide? And so we mentioned 18 live Zoom sessions. And these sessions had different topics that were pertinent and relevant to our LaSallean community. Topics included making sure that we have a gender balanced mindset in leadership or helping us to consider communication and culture within our organizations and when looking outward to develop collaboration. Additionally, we worked one-on-one -on -one with members in the program so that the work that we put in together is representative of the rich diverseness, diversity and talent of our global LaSalle family to make sure that the strategy we develop is one that's relevant and applicable for our international institute with the aim of helping us to provide even greater impact for those whom we serve in our individual ministries every day. Let's we'll move to the next slide. And so when we thought of the process and our strategy, thought that a house was actually a, a really good metaphor to describe the process. Uh, because a house starts from the bottom with a solid foundation. And so if we look at the bottom, we see that there are core values and beliefs. These core values and beliefs were developed in our initial sessions, discussing amongst 54 different participants from five regions and three languages. And those core values and beliefs were identified as faith, service, and community. And for our initiative together, we identified our mission and our mission is to be an effective, efficient, and integrated LaSallean network to help us achieve our purpose, to collaborate, to transform lives through LaSallean education. And in doing so, we continue to see our vision of a world transformed for the better through LaSallean education. And so these were developed together during initial sessions in order to achieve our mission, purpose, and vision that are formed, that are informed by our values and beliefs, we developed three goals that have practical actions to help achieve those goals. In green, we have goal one, to create a more collaborative culture and a practical action that we'll learn about today to help us do that growing the educational mission. In yellow, we have goal two, create superlative organizational strengths with two practical actions, telling our story and understanding the network that will help us achieve goal two 
and in doing so, our mission, purpose, and our vision. Goal three in red is to create a more connected network with two practical actions that we'll learn about today as well. Formalizing our collaboration and developing our leaders. So these goals and practical actions are informed by our shared values and beliefs and help us to carry out our mission and our purpose in order for us to continue to see and to deepen our vision of a world transformed for the better through Salian education. Rosie, next slide. And so as we learn about our practical actions today, it's important to remember that none of these stand alone. Our five practical actions that we developed, one, growing the educational mission, two, telling our story, three, understanding the network, four, formalizing our collaboration, five, developing our leaders. All five of these practical actions come together to form one complete comprehensive strategy that focuses on making collaboration common throughout our LaSallean family. And so that's a little bit of the background and some information on the process that we've gone through to get to today that leads to our five practical actions that form our larger strategy on making collaboration common. And so now I'd like to move into each one of the practical actions. And I'd like to invite Julia Mayer from Practical Action Group One, Growing Our Educational Mission. Julia is from the District of Central Europe. Julia, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Peter. I'm delighted to be part of today's webinar. Hello from Central Europe, from Austria. Um, I would like to start with the house that Peter just presented to us that we built together within the last year. Together with Brother David, Brother Ferdinand, Heather, Mark, Brother Nestor, Peter, Brother Santiago, Serena, Brother Valer, and Jane, and our Kepler facilitator, Dan, we investigated how to increase the supply of qualified teachers as the focus of an overarching global initiative. In the next minutes, I would like to present our practical action, tell you where our group got to and inform you about future steps and ask you for your feedback in the end. As a group, we were, assi we were assigned the practical action of growing the educational mission. And thus, we try to work towards the overarching action of responding to the global shortage of teachers and to specifically focus on increasing the number of teachers in the region of, of, Relaf, of, of our Relaf region. Why do we focus on the global teacher shortage? The UNESCO has identified that the world will need 68.8 million qualified teachers to achieve the SDG 4 by 2030. The Salian Network has a history of knowledge, ability, and capacity to train teachers. So meeting this need is a natural response, especially in Relaf countries. To achieve this overarching action of increasing the number of teachers in Relaf, we develop three supporting actions. Focusing on supporting the existing ministry through professional development first. Second, launching a global campaign inviting discernment about the vocation to education. And third, conducting academic research in order to find the root causes of teacher shortage. Let me start to present our supporting action one to you. Supporting an existing ministry through professional development and accompaniment providing teacher training in Relaf. Sounds very very complicated and complex is actually very simple. As I said, the UNESCO identified a huge amount of teachers that 
need to be hired in the future, especially in Africa. And there's a clear need for teacher training in Relaf. We started out by inviting experts from Relaf, and it soon became clear that, it, that the educational sector in Relaf is heavily privatized and teachers are not adequately remunerated and trained. Discussions have also revealed that the vocation of teaching is not adequately appreciated. Hence, competent trained teachers move for better and less stressful jobs. What we want to do is to provide teacher accompaniment as well as non-monetary compensation for further professional development for Lasallian teachers. In general, the goal is to create a Lasallian community of support and accompaniment by including mentoring programs for young teachers, by providing training and subject content, and in general, create added value for Lasallian teachers. Our next step, steps for the supporting action one would be to schedule meetings with all stakeholders, including mission councils, district councils, brother visitors, head of ministries, dealing with teacher training and pastoral ministries. That's it for supporting action one. Our supporting action two is based on a campaign we would like to launch. We would like to use the network to launch a campaign targeted in an, at inviting discernment about the vocation of teachers and of education, in specific, Lasallian education. In general, we want to leverage a global captive audience of young people following the great example of the positive global response to the tricentenary. We want to make use of our network and involve and, involve, and those involved in the pastoral ministry of vocation and young Lasallians, as well as secretariats of formation, association and mission and communication to launch a global campaign targeted at inviting discernment about the vocation to, ed to education and specifically education, Lasallian education that addresses the whole Lasallian family. To put it in a nutshell, we want to invite young people to consider the vocation of F educators and its benefits. Our next steps for this supporting action will be to finally launch the campaign and before that to convene a group of stakeholders, including Lasallian, young Lasallians, the vocation ministries at district, regional and international levels, the secretariats of service and of the Institute and teacher training students to discuss the idea and then to launch the campaign. And let me finish by our third supporting action, which is we would like to conduct a, an academic research in order to find the root causes of teacher shortage and in order to also offer long-term solutions and a Lasallian response. After examining the global teacher shortage starting in Relaf, research will be needed to assess the current needs and to find practical evidence-based solutions. Our task will be to finalize the terms of reference, reference invite YALO to identify key experts in educational research, and then carry out the research itself. It will also be essential to follow up with YALO research with the YALO research team and to find funding scope, timeline, and target audience, and finally carry out the research itself. In the final Kepler meeting in March 2021, we already received some feedback from, from our colleagues on the feasibility of a practical implementation. And now I would like to invite you to give us feedback. What do you think about those three um, supporting actions? Maybe you have some initial comments. And I would also like to invite my group members to make any additional comments on our three actions. You can use the chat um, to write down any feedback that you might have, or you might want to use the link to give us a bit more detailed feedback in this Google form that we created. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present our supporting actions in order to grow as a Lasallian family and in order to make collaboration possible.
Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Julia, for sharing that with us. And please feel free to access the link in the chat and, and leave your feedback there as well. Thanks again. And now to share with us for practical action two, telling our story, I'd like to invite Scott Cure from the Midwest District of the United States to share his group work. Scott, thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you, Peter, and good morning to everybody. And it's nice to be doing these, and we're actually in the morning sunlight since the sun's been up for about a half an hour now. So our group um, met uh, several times, and we are composed of individuals from Australia, the United States, and Europe. Next slide. Our group was cha charged with telling our story. We all know that the LaSallian story is wide ranging and we were looking for one story that could enhance the scope and the breadth of this LaSallian mission. We knew it was daunting because the LaSallian story is different for each of us and different for each one of our ministries as we move forward. But I think that the final product that we came up with is something that can be useful both today and in the future for our groups as we move forward. And I think it's relevant and, and in the time for all the regions and ministries as well too. Next slide. <clears throat> Sorry, my computer's on a It's go. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's stuck. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> can you share, can you share with me and I can get through it? Yeah, I would just try sharing again. I don't know why it's stuck. Hmm. Use for this. Hmm. We can go to the, the question. Sure. What I'd like to do is as Julia was doing, I would like to make this interactive and we will do a word cloud, the same thing as we did before. And in one, one word, could you tell us what one word would you use to tell our LaSallian story? And you can just put that in the uh, menti, which is the code 86376100. You can see some different ones, evangelization, fraternity, service, hope, education, education for the poor, service again. Somebody gave us the code for the number, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> education for the poor, hope, I like that, inspirational. together, solidarity, service and education for all and education for the poor is part of, looks like it's coming up as the most hope. So, so thank you, Rosie, we, do you, is your screen going? Good. So why were you we doing this? We were looking at the three main areas on why we were looking for something to tell our story. One, we knew that we have a global presence throughout the world. We're in 80 different countries. And as we well know, every day we're reaching about 1 million students throughout our ministries. So we knew we had a global strength. But we also knew we needed greater clarity around who we are, what we value, what we stand for. I think it's one of those things is a consistent message for all is important as well then too. 
And after this past year, there is an excitement to be active in this mission as well, too. And we wanted to somehow portray that in a statement. And as we all know that it's never easy to say in one page, which we tried to get it down to, everything in those three main areas. But I, I think we tried. So uh, the next one. And thanks to Craig Franz, he uses this, this illusion, illustration for us as well, too. We were really looking for what can we do to have our elevator speech so that in any floor that somebody gets on, that they'll be able to know what the Lasallian mission is. It starts off with two people on the first floor, and then somebody gets off, one of them get off, and on the second floor, you have somebody else get on, and they're going to say, what is this Lasalle? So by the time they get up to about the ninth floor, we hope that the message is the same. We hope that it's something that achieves our mission. And it also gives something to a, a broader understanding about who we are in this Lasallian mission. Next slide. The key considerations for this is that we knew that going in, we were pretty limited as far as the breadth of our knowledge. As I indicated before, our group was composed of representatives from the United States, Australia, and Europe. And we also know that we're missing a lot of other voices as well too. So we were trying to uh, create a statement that shares everybody's values, but also makes it applicable to everybody as well too, which is a challenge. And we also knew that it has to be translated and treated visually so that it's not just a piece of paper that everybody has sent and nobody uses it for actions, action items or anything. Rosie, next. The part of our what was the theme is we wanted to hit on the history of service that we all have in all of our ministries. The global realities we presently face, the innovation and transformative nature of all the works in our ministries, as well as the foundation of the faith, service, and community. We also wanted to make sure that our statement is strong, it's empowering, but it also shows the well warmth and concern and positivity and is inclusive for all as well, too. And trying to get it on one page to make it memorable, succinct, inspiring, and reflect all that we are in this global institute. Next, Rosie. Again, this is we were trying to get it down to one page. The wording has to be adapted for everybody. We have to also have to have the cross-cultural language concerns. We have to keep it relevant and lively and part of who we are today as well, too. So the next, I think we have one more slide. Oh. So where are we at right now? We have a document that's been translated into three core languages, English, Spanish, and French. And we're also looking at it to make it more visually uh, appealing. Thanks to Laura and the uh, communication staffs in Rome that's in the uh, layout processing stage now where a new format will be developed. And in the booklet and the uh, that Peter showed earlier, that's where it will be found as well then too. And I think the important things that we really wanna do is I wanna reiterate that this is adaptive to all the ministries. These are the, you know, it sets out a core message but it also isn't meant to be all inclusive and all um, lock, sap, and barrel for everybody as well, too. We want to know, we wanted to make sure that this is who we are today, but this is also adaptable for a transformative future as we move forward as well, too. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Scott, and to all of you in group two for all of your work in putting together that practical action of telling our story. And now I'd like to invite Brother Chris Patino of the District of San Francisco, uh, New Orleans, to help us understand a little bit about the work that his group did uh, in understanding the Lasallian Network. Brother Chris, 
to join us. Thank you, Peter. Uh, hello to everyone. Um, so yes, presenting for our group, and you can see on there the uh, members of our group um, who worked uh, very diligently on, on this action, on these, uh, uh, on this step, on these action steps. Um, in particular, I want to thank um, uh, Laura Ballerini uh, from the Office of Solidarity for the leadership of our group. She really kind of helped us move a lot of this forward. And also very grateful for Brother Andres Covela Gutierrez, um, who really kind of provided some insights that again, helped us sort of zero in on our actions and make this uh, hopefully as useful and practical um, for, for our ongoing um, goals and, and collaboration. And of course, all of the group members, many of who are on the call today. Um, in our first session last May, we were asked to share with one another what collaboration looks like. And a common theme that surfaced for me was the importance of awareness. If we're going to collaborate, we need to be aware of what is happening. And so in a number of co group conversations, this would come up. How do we effectively communicate what is happening across the Institute and LaSallean family? How do we do this in a way that is useful and practical? And so in considering those questions, uh, this is the action that we came up with to create processes and tools that allow for a clear overview and greater knowledge of the global LaSallean network. And of course, as good LaSallians, we began with identifying needs. Um, and so our, our actions uh, look to respond to the needs that you see on the screen, to be able to more easily find contacts with other Vassalian representatives engaged in the same field or across ministries, across roles in other areas of the world. So to really kind of create that um, connection of individuals, having a global vision of the impact uh, of our LaSallean network, um, our LaSallean family in the world, and to create a common framework to facilitate understanding of our LaSallean network, and again, communication among ourselves. So that led us to uh, two actions uh, for our proposal. One is to the creation of a template uh, or framework that would facilitate the overall understanding of the global Estonian network, as well as, as the many components that comprise it and the relationship or connection between them. Really the vision of a database, something that is accessible to those who want to use it um, and uh, uh, an online platform or website that would allow us to see and connect with what is happening in a sense, oftentimes not to reinvent the wheel or to recognize how others are responding to certain challenges um, uh, and, and uh, making sure that this is across various areas um, of our LaSallean family, of our LaSallean mission. So whether we're talking about governance and leadership, whether we're talking about formation, pastoral ministry activities, volunteering, uh, NGOs in our network, what is happening? And if I need to access something, being able to do that in a very practical way. Um, so that creation of a template that would then feed into the building up of this online platform. And then the second action with that, because not simply again about the sharing of ideas, but really the exchange and connecting of people, of individuals, is to identify district representatives um, in various fields, various key fields, various key areas of our LaSallean educational mission and LaSallean family. Um, and again, to help implement uh, the implementation of formation and exchanging of what is happening. Um, and again, be able to connect with one another. 
we know that this would need good coordination um, and need really a team of individuals that's representative of our diverse realities. Um, and so we, we had proposed that one of our next steps, if this proposal is accepted, um, would be to the creation of, a, of an over, a team that would oversee um, or coordinate all of this um, to ensure that it, um, it, it comes into practice in, in a good way. So that, that, um, that would be one of the essential first steps to um, these actions. So with that in mind, keeping in mind the purpose of this proposal, to share and collaborate across the global Lasallian family. I just want to invite you just for a moment to list in the chat one or two areas where you think there's a need for greater awareness of collaboration. So think of your reality, whether you're in leadership, whether you're in a school, um, think of your reality and what are the opportunities um, or the areas where you see there's a need for greater awareness or collaboration. And so the in the chat sort of informal survey here, just want to invite you to list whether it's areas of ministry, initiatives, educational mission priorities, topics around association, advocacy efforts. What are one or two areas where you think there's a need for greater awareness or collaboration? We see formation, student-teacher student mobility, to make the Italian schools more inclusive, volunteering, formation, being aware of those ministries uh, responding to social needs, data exchange, the formation of teachers, so exactly. So I think you see what our proposal is uh, seeking to do is to say we, we recognize there's many opportunities for collaboration. And so how can we become more aware of what is happening, become more aware of what the needs are, and being able to access that for the sharing of ideas, the sharing of processes and resources, and most importantly, really the working together, that true association with one another. So I appreciate that. I will be copying and pasting those because um, I think they will help uh, our group. And if this ever, if this hopefully gets off the ground for that coordinating group to keep these things in mind. So let me just say finally, once again, uh, thank you. Um, and I want to thank the group, and I want to conclude with something I shared with the overall group back in September, that this focus and effort towards greater collaboration, I believe, is very evangelical. It's about strengthening our solidarity with one another as Lasallians, not for our sake, of course, but for the sake of those entrusted to our care. We know this is the focus of Pope Francis' encyclical Fratelli Tutti. I know this has been an area of priority for our superior general and his council. And so I close with the words of a book that I recently read that speaks to prophetic solidarity. Quote, drawing near the other, intentionally choosing encounter that makes meaningful connection and inclusive community possible. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Brother Chris and everyone in group three, understanding the network. Thanks again. And now I'd like to move to practical action for formalizing our collaboration with Jordi Jover from the Arlep district and Peter Moore from Kepler Horizons. Jordi and Peter, thanks for joining us. Pues muchas gracias y con, y con Peter haremos esta presentación. 
Eh, también, primero de todo, recordar a los compañeros y compañeras del, del grupo, Dante, Eber, Fabris, Lucía, Rosa y los hermanos Amílcarer, Armin, Raúl y Vinicio, y como decíamos también, los facilitadores Peter y Fiona. Adelante, siguiente. En este grupo de trabajo era... Eh, que habíamos la concreción del, de cómo estructuramos o el camino más bien de cómo queremos estructurar este, este nuevo desafío. En esto hemos eh, señalado unos siete primeros objetivos, que sería ayudarnos a enfrentar a estos desafíos que hemos, los compañeros de los otros grupos han ido indicando de una manera eficaz, eficiente y evidentemente escalada en el tiempo, con una hoja de ruta marcada. Esto creemos que potenciaría pues, el trabajo común, la promoción de una mayor unidad y esta formación de líderes en esta causa. Esto se expresa por, por una solidaridad global que queremos reforzar con nuestra ya misión educativa La Saliana. Creemos también que esta, esta posible futura estructura pues, fortalecería el ámbito local. Los consideramos importante, vital que desde la estructura local se, se haya este sentimiento y esta voluntad de unificación. En eso también fortalecería la marca La Salle y con eso también todo el tema que, que se expresa en la recaudación de fondos, en, la, en, la, en las campañas que se puedan realizar. Evidentemente, como cualquier, como cualquier trabajo en grupo, en equipo, cooperativo, pues fortalecería los aprendizajes y, de, y compartiríamos las buenas prácticas. Nuestra realidad es que hay mucha riqueza en todos, en todos los lugares en que hay, hay organizaciones, hay ONGs, hay un trabajo desde las instituciones que se potencia. Y, este, y evidentemente estos mecanismos actuales están basa, basados pues en la realidad que ya tenemos previa en estos, estos geográficos y así no excluir ninguna de las ONGs que, que, se tra que trabajan en el ámbito de solidaridad y cooperación. La siguiente, por favor. Bueno, evidentemente aquí ha ha hacíamos un triángulo con estos vínculos más formales que consideramos que en el ámbito de las ONGs las, aliares, las alianas ayudarían mejor en, en, en nuestro trabajo, una parte de, de todo lo que supone las ideas, las técnicas, los proyectos conjuntos y su capacidad que podemos tener eh, mayor de influencia y evidentemente con esta, con esta marca global que antes mencionaba, conjunta y de, de, de unificada, podríamos tener una mayor fuerza en, en lo que sea a identidad y también lo que es respecta a la recaudación de fondos. La siguiente, por favor. Vale, aquí comentamos, ¿y cómo, y cómo hacemos esto? ¿no? Pues bueno, el, el grupo de trabajo bueno, ha considerado una primera propuesta que en estos, en estos tres espacios, ¿no? en el modo asamblea, donde todas las ONGs, las alianas participaran, se pueden evidentemente, y hoy es un claro ejemplo, reunirse de manera virtualmente, puede, pero podemos hoy por hoy, y con la realidad digital y tecnológica, llegar a... A, a, a muchos o casi todos los lugares las alianos del mundo, evidentemente con, con la ayuda del ámbito tecnológico. En eso, ¿cómo lo, ¿cómo lo podíamos concretar? Esta primera propuesta sería que hubiera un comité de coordinación entre 6 y 10 personas elegidas por esta propia asamblea de ONGs las alianas que apoyan la coordinación y las líneas de trabajo antes mencionadas en los diferentes grupos y las que se pudieran desarrollar o proponer. Y como, para, para poder ejecutarlo de una manera eh, operativa, pues pensamos que tendría que haber una persona que, que coordinara esta función, que podía estar dedicada a tiempo completo para este soporte técnico, lo que se, tanto en la coordinación como en la asamblea que se propone, propone para de ONGs las alianas. El siguiente, por favor.
los primeros pasos y en esta hoja de ruta que mencionaba un poquito antes, ¿no? Como esta propuesta, pues lo primero de todo, al final hemos sido un grupo mmm, global de personas que hemos realizado un trabajo de campo, pero ahora se tiene la concreción, por tanto, nuestra propuesta va en la línea de crear, de proponer crear un grupo de trabajo dentro de Solidaridad con, con los enlaces en que corresponda de las ONGs, estudiar estas diferentes opciones para pensar en una posible estructura inicial más detallada, una, una concreción mayor cómo operativamente podemos avanzar en, esta, en este tema, desarrollar con, lógicamente y establecer lo que se viene a llamar un memorando de entendimiento o un protocolo de acuerdo de cómo podemos ir avanzando en esta coordinación, marca, recaudación, estructura, que todos nos podamos sentir identificados, cómodos y que sea también escalable. Por tanto, inicialmente implementar, no estamos hablando de una estructura propiamente legal, sino de, inicialmente informal, digamos, dentro de nuestro mundo lasaliano, pero que pueda, nos pueda servir para fortalecer todas estas propuestas de los diferentes grupos y en nuestro caso, en el grupo 4, pues estas, eh, cómo, cómo estructuramos esto para que pueda seguir avanzando. Adelante y creo que la siguiente... La siguiente, pues paso la palabra al compañero Peter y con ello sigue. Gracias. Thank you very much, Jordi. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Uh, we would now like to seek your comments on the ideas that Jordi has presented on behalf of our group. So please, can you write in the chat any questions or comments you'd like to make on anything at all, but perhaps whether the structure is needed, what should the structure do? We've given some ideas, but we'd welcome others. And any comments about the structure we are proposing of an assembly, uh, coordinating committee, and a coordinator or coordinators? So please write in your comments and we will then use them in the working group we are hoping to set up to guide the, the work in, as, it, as it goes forward. So thank you very much. I can see lots of interesting ideas coming in and I'm glad to see positive uh, yeah, yeah. support for the, uh, for the ideas. And, uh, and some ideas on the road. Ideas of the role of the group with collaboration, solid, solidarity, international exchanges. And clearly, one of the things this group will work on is the extent to which we can also uh, link to the ideas that Brother Chris was describing from the third group, uh, in, in, in particular, uh, his idea of uh, district representatives. I think they would fit in with this structure very well. So thank you for the ideas that, that uh, keep on coming. Please continue uh, to write these uh, in. They will be very valuable, but I, I think our time is running out. So I shall uh, hand over in a moment to uh, back to Peter to introduce the fifth group. But I'd just like to say thank you uh, uh, on all your behalves to the group of 10 people who worked on this and to brother Agustin, who is our kind and very successful uh, interpreter. So thank you very much for your comments, extremely helpful. Uh, back to the other Peter. All right, thank you. Thank you, other Peter. Uh, thank you, Jordi and Peter Moore and all the members in group four formalizing our collaboration. And just wanted to mention that group four is offering another presentation tomorrow at the same time, 12 p.m. Rome time where they will provide a little more detail about formalizing our network. And I'll put in the chat now the Zoom link to register for that, for anyone who's interested in attending and gathering more information about this continuing process. So thanks again. Uh, and just one reminder to please go ahead and make sure that our microphones are muted throughout our call. 
uh, to avoid any unnecessary noise or feedback during the presentations. Thanks. And now uh, I'd like to move on to practical action five, developing our leaders. And Keen Palatino, International Coordinator of Young Lasallians, will share his group's work. Keen, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Peter. Um, let me just share my slides. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all Lasallians here with us today. My name is Keen, and today I will be presenting on behalf of our group who created this proposal on developing a program for Lasallian leaders. With me in the group are members from the different districts and regions, leaders of our international network of LaSalle universities and the Global Association of LaSalle former students, LaSalleans from the NGO sector, and members of the secretariats in the institute. LaSalle information for mission has always been understood as a practical response to prayerful considerations of free life situations. Formation enables to respond, people to respond to God's mission to make the world more human, more compassionate, and more fraternal. Over this past year of Kepler gatherings, we have come to more clearly understand the breadth and depth of LaSallean service around the world. The diversity of educational communities is profound. The creativity and innovation in addressing these needs of children and young people is inspiring and unrelenting. And we continue to work together toward a stronger unity in order to become more impactful on a global scale. The continuous formation of Lasallian leaders is an essential component of our collaboration going forward. As an international faith-based community, how can we best respond to our obligations of justice and service in our world. The compendium to the social doctrine of the church reminds us, social justice concerns the social, oh. political, and economic aspects, and above all, the structural dimension of problems and their respective solutions. The recently published Declaration on LaSallean Educational Mission reminds us that the existence of innovative educational responses that are happening in many parts of the Lasallian world and that are real responses to the problems of poverty are impressive. However, educational commitment to the poor is insufficient if it is not intimately linked to the cost of social justice and equity. The educational service of the poor is in essence, a service to the cause of justice that in turn promotes equitable, inclusive societies, respectful of the dignity of people and attentive to the full satisfaction of their needs. Moving forward, we want to offer a formation experience that helps to prepare people to take a leading role in promoting justice and advocating for the impoverished and marginalized. We want to ensure the sustainability of our many NGOs and solidarity projects through the preparation of the next generation of leaders so that the Lasallian family will be a dynamic and influencing force for good in the world. The purpose is to accelerate the Lasallian network's contribution to the sustainable development goals through a leadership development program focused on inspiring and enabling leaders especially our next generation of leaders, to strengthen their advocacy and program delivery leadership abilities while also building internal leadership capacity and collaboration. The following slides contain the proposed modules and subtopics that will help achieve this goal of developing Lasallian leaders in the areas of promoting social justice and advocacy. Module one talks about an effective leader. And under this are the topics of effective leadership, leading for high performance, which allows us to reflect on the relationship between effective leadership and performance in organizations. 
Second, the job of the leader, choosing and connecting, to learn about decision-making and connection as two core activities of leaders, on communication, to develop effective strategies to get the message out using technology and social networking in an interconnected world, and fourth, strategies and models for leading change, which would allow us to consider the role of the leader in driving change both locally and globally. Module two speaks about the ethical leader. Subtopics that fall under this are leading the right way on ethical principles and foundations, good governance, how to structure an organization in an effective and transparent way, transparency and accountability, how to set up a transparent organization with accountability mechanisms and anti-corruption and compliance to establish a solid link between ethics and decision-making, avoiding all forms of corruption. Module three talks about a committed leader. And under this would be Christian charism to learn about the social doctrine of the church and our responsibility to others, alignment with global needs and realities, and how to develop programs that contribute towards the sustainable development goals. Third would be advocacy and social responsibility. The talks about responding to challenges and taking part in solutions, including humanitarian emergencies. And fourth would be practical development and fundraising, which is how to develop strategies for generating resources and their effective utilization. The last module is on a Lasallian leader. And under this are four sub-themes looking towards the future to learn about the Institute's latest documents, goals and objectives towards the general chapter and beyond, the purpose as a leader to establish alignment between personal purpose and the purpose of the organization within the Lasallian network, leading by example through experiences of Lasallian leaders in all aspects of life, in education, solidarity, government and business, and the last subtopic would be together and by association, which is working towards a common and broader objective with other programs across the Lasallian network. Now, how do we do all these? What are the strategies and some factors that would ensure the success of this initiative? First, we'll be maximizing our network of alumni, Lasallian leaders from our different institutions and experts for specific content and their lived experiences. We are also hoping to build on existing elements or existing programs where it is appropriate or possible. All with the goal of aligning these efforts with the recently released Institute documents. Another goal for this initiative is to become a common global program across the network, but customized for local cultures and practice. We are hoping that this will help amplify the Lasallian message using a professional language and style. Synergy with different networks will be critical, such as partnerships, partnerships with the International Association of Lasalle Universities as a main resource, alumni for experiences, the Young Lasallian Network for a wider reach, and solidarity and development for content. Another opportunity to look into is the inclusion of NGOs not linked directly to the Institute, as well as non-educators. With regard to launching this initiative, the Solidarity and Development Secretariat will be best placed to lead the program with support from other networks. This international program will emphasize on the importance to maintain the Lasallian identity in relation to the SDGs. Modules will be available online to allow inclusion and accessibility to all next generation leaders globally. Through this proposal, we hope to open more avenues for Lasallians to be part of formation experiences and processes with the goal of developing our leaders and ultimately creating greater impact to society. Just like with the previous groups who presented, we invite everyone to type in your comments, your questions, your feedback in the chat box, 
and we would love to continue this conversation even after this meeting. Thank you very much and have a good day to everyone. Great. Thank you very much, Keen, for that excellent presentation uh, on the Practical Action 5, Developing Our Leaders. And thank you to everyone in your group for their work in putting that together. And so we've learned a little bit about each one of the five practical actions that come out of this year-long practice uh, initiative to help form one strategy, one comprehensive strategy on collaboration. We'll be sharing that strategic document in early next week, just to, to let you know and to keep your, keep your eyes out for that document uh, when it comes along. And now I'd like to hand over to Brother Bob Schaefer, uh, the Secretariat for Formation and of the District of Ether, Eastern North America, to help us with some, some closing th thoughts on year one and potential next steps for collaboration for Institute. Brother Bob, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Peter. And yeah. thank you to all of you for taking the time to be with us this, this day. In a year of incredible challenges, frustrations, difficulties, and disappointments, one of the most positive experiences for this group has been, been able to be a part of the forming and creation of this new Lasallian community, this online global community beyond any kind of borders. More than a year ago, many of us logged on to an initial Zoom session unsure of what we were getting ourselves into. There was a vague understanding that the session was for a diverse group of Lasallians from around the world looking for opportunities to work more closely and more effectively in support of the mission. What, did, what was meant by collaboration? And over the course of the year, a true LaSallean community for mission has emerged and has developed among the participants. We've had opportunities for sharing experiences, beliefs, hopes, and challenges that has allowed for a spirit of creativity and innovation to emerge, a spirit motivated and inspired by the gospel message of the, the importance of the reign of God. It was all focused on a collaborate on collaborating in a spirit of association to make the world more just, more compassionate, and more loving through our attention to children and young people who are poor and who are on the margins. A significant realization of this year-long experience is, is that LaSalle truly is a worldwide community that can, when we align ourselves properly together, be a significant change agent in the world. In Christian language, we can help bring about the reign of God. We need to collaborate as a unified international community of influence, especially as the world begins to gradually emerge from this global pandemic. The LaSallian community knows what true solidarity looks like. Working together in a fraternal spirit to ensure the well being of others. Imagine what can be done if we really commit to collaborating in fundraising to support important development projects, or if we as an international community truly collaborate to promote the vocation of a teacher and work to prepare quality teachers where they are lacking and most needed. And that's just to name two examples that we've heard from this morning. The most important thing is that this year long communal experience has shown a way to break through burdensome bureaucracy and ineffective silo structures that can sometimes exist in an international community and to allow us to bring ideas into practical real world application, to take the idea and bring it to fruition. 
my hope, and I think the hope of many of us who participated in this session, that this kind of collaboration will continue into the future and will allow us to unleash the power of a unified community focused on our, on our mission. I'm very grateful, and I know I speak for many of the participants, for the work of the Kapler organization who has helped keep us focused on the commitment from the Solidarity uh, and Development Secretariat, who has really been the inspiration and the emphasis behind this group. So as we look to the future, the future looks good at a time where many people might question the optimism and hope that this community has witnessed too. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brother Bob, for that reflection on year one of our collaborative initiative. Uh, and I just wanted to take a second to say thank you. Um, thank you to our five presenters for assisting us today and all of those in the process that have shared your time and effort. And to all of you on the call today, uh, joining us for taking time out to learn about the initiative and how we might be able to walk together for the next steps to continue to deepen collaboration. I also wanted to say thank you to Mary O'Connell and to Miss Yankara, uh, whose support has made this initiative possible. So thank you very much. And a special thank you to our interpreters our six interpreters that we've realized that without all of you, without your efforts, we would not be able to bring together 54 people from five different regions across 18 time zones in three different languages you know, for 1,620 minutes. So thank you truly for all of your efforts for making this possible. Uh, and so for the next steps, uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that a feedback form for today's session will be sent out to all of you probably later today or early tomorrow, depending on your time zone, of course. And also to keep an eye out for our strategic document that is being finalized and will be translated into the official languages that we'll send out next week. With that document, you'll also be given a chance through a feedback form or even direct email if you want to share your thoughts and reactions to the document and how we might be able to continue to improve collaboration. So we really encourage you to share this document as widely as possible throughout your networks. So we're really excited for the next year of our strategic collaborative initiative and look forward to walking with all of you together at these next steps. Thanks again for joining us. And have a great day, and we'll be in touch soon. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.